You know, people keep telling me, Keon, how do you make these amazing 3D graphics for the hit YouTube channel Frameforge? And I say, we just passed 1K subscribers, we're not that big yet. But the way that I make those graphics is in Blender, a free 3D software. And today, I'm going to teach you how to make this really clean looking ring from Sonic the Hedgehog using only Blender. So if you want to take your first steps into 3D animation, why don't you hit that like, smash that subscribe, and stay tuned. So the first thing you'll need to do is to go to blender.org and download Blender. Super easy and the installation is really fast. Blender is an amazing software I've been using for the past year and a half and I cannot recommend it enough. Our intro to Frameforge was actually made in Blender. Make sure you download the most recent version of Blender, which for us is version 2.82. Once you have Blender installed, open it up and you're going to see this scene. There's going to be a camera, a cube, and a little light. For this project, we're only going to need the camera, so delete the cube and the light. Now that they're gone, let's put in our ring. Hit Shift A to bring up the Add menu, and then go to Mesh, and then go down to Torus, the thing that looks like a little donut. And there you go, we're already halfway there. So to look around your scene, you're going to use your middle mouse button to orbit around the torus, use Shift in the middle mouse button to go left and right and up and down in your scene, and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Now that we have our torus, it looks really similar to a ring, but the rings in Sonic the Hedgehog are much skinnier. So let's edit that torus by going to the lower left hand corner and opening up the Add Torus menu. You can change a lot of parts of the torus, but what we're going to do is just change the major radius to be about 1.5 millimeters. And there we go! Now it's looking more like a sonic ring, but it still looks weirdly blocky. We can fix that by hitting Shade Smooth. That evens out the shading around the torus, but you'll still get these weird edges. So the way to fix that is to go to the Properties menu and open up the Modifiers tab. The side windows on the right are exactly the same, I just opened up an additional one so you could see it over the commands that I'm typing in. Once you're in the Modifier window, go to Add Modifier and Subdivision Surface. Change the Render and Viewport to 2 and that will add more edges to smooth out the torus. Now hit Apply and it'll apply those additional edges. Now that it has the shape that we want, let's add that gold look. So click on the little ball icon, which is the Materials tab, and make a new material. This part's going to be really simple. Just choose a base color that looks like the shade of gold that you want, turn metallic all the way to 1, and bring roughness all the way down to 0. Okay cool, we did that, but nothing really changed. Well that's because we're in the solid view, we need to change it to rendered. So hit Z on your keyboard and it'll bring up this menu. If you click wireframe, we can see the wireframe of our torus. But what we want is the rendered view, so hit Z and go to rendered. And ugh, this is not what we want. So the problem here is that the ring is reflecting just the grayness of the environment. So we need to make a new environment. So go to the world tab, which is that little globe, and you can actually change the color of the environment. You can change the color of the environment here and the strength of that color, but that's not what we want. So click the round button next to the color and go to environment texture. What we're going to be doing is putting in what's called an HDRI. An HDRI is a 360 degree image that's going to be doing a lot of the work for us. To download an HDRI, please go to HDRI Haven. It's a free resource where you can download a bunch of these environment textures. The one we're going to be using is called Satara Night. You can download it in a bunch of different resolutions, but I'd recommend 4K to keep a lot of the quality there. Once you've downloaded it, under the environment texture of our world settings, hit open and navigate over to where you downloaded your HDRI and open it. Hello there. And look at that, it's looking way better now. And if we look around, we can see our HDRI. But it's a little dark for my taste. So let's take that strength and pump it up to five. Boom. Now that's what we like to see. But we can add a little bit more flair in the render tab. Here we can hit ambient occlusion, bloom, which is gonna add a little bit of flair, wow. screen space reflection, which will add more detail to the reflections in the gold. And if we go to screen and transparent, it'll make our background transparent. So now we can use this graphic over anything that we want. Nice. And this ring is looking great, but how are we going to export it? Well, what we need to do is position the camera to get the view that we want. So to move the camera, you first need to click on the camera and then press G. If you press G, it can move anywhere in 3D space, but we want to control it a little bit more precisely. If you hit Alt and G, it will move the camera to the origin point and undo all of the movements. And just like G is for movement, R is for rotation. So if you hit R, you can rotate the camera however you like. And just like G, if you hit Alt R, that will undo all of the rotation and the camera will be looking straight down. And now we just need to press G, Z, and 10. 
and that will move the camera on the z-axis 10 units up. And if you press 0 on your number pad, that will put you in the perspective of the camera, and you'll see it's pointed exactly how we want it. And if you don't have a number pad, click the camera icon on the right to go into the camera view. Now before we start animating, we need to make sure that one of our preferences is right. So go to Edit, and then Preferences. In the Preferences window, if you go to Input, you can also emulate the number pad. So if you click that little checkbox, you can use the regular numbers on your keypad and change the camera view that way. But the major thing we want to change is the F-curves. So go to the Animations tab, and under F-curves, make sure that the default interpolation is set to Linear. Usually Blender defaults it to Bezier, but we need it on Linear, so this will perfectly loop. Now that that's changed, we can get to animating. But now how are we going to animate that ring? Well, we're going to do it using the timeline. So at the bottom, make sure that the playhead's at the first frame by clicking the left arrow with the line next to it. Now that it's there, we're going to set a keyframe at frame 1 by right-clicking on rotation and saying insert keyframe. The major axis that we want to rotate on is the y-axis. So once we've set the first keyframe, hit the right arrow with the line next to it to go to the last frame. But don't set the keyframe yet. Make sure to hit the right arrow on your keyboard to go to frame 251. That way we don't have an extra frame of rotation on the ring, and the animation will seamlessly loop. Once you're on frame 251, change the Y rotation to 360 degrees and insert another keyframe. And there you go, our ring's rotating and it's a perfect loop. Wow! And the cool thing is, you can reorient the camera and get whatever angle of the ring that you want. And there we go! The last thing we need to do is render this bad boy, so go to the Output Properties tab and select your output location. By default, Blender is going to export it as a bunch of PNG images. It's a good idea to keep it like that so that you can keep the transparency behind the ring. But you can also export it as a video file if instead of PNG you click FFmpeg. So the last thing we need to do is pick our output folder. I always make sure to make a new folder with a descriptive title and then output all the PNGs into that folder. That way they're in a nice container for us to use in our video editor. And there we go, everything's ready. Last thing you need to do is hit Control F12 on your keyboard, and Blender will start rendering out the images. Up, oh, wait, something looks a little weird. Oh no! Oh, you can see it right there. Everything looks a little blocky. Oops. Hit Escape to get out of the render, and right-click on the torus to make sure it's shaded smooth. That way the reflections will look nice and round. I'm gonna hit Control F12 and restart that render. There's gonna be 250 frames of this animation, so it's a good idea to take a step away from your computer, go get a chili dog, and come back in a little while when it's done. And after a little bit of time, our ring animation is done. Now let me show you how to import this into a video editor. Today we're gonna to be using Premiere Pro, which is my editor of choice. After you open up a project file, all you need to do is go to your media folder, right click, and hit import. Now navigate to the folder where you exported all those images, and click on the first image. Now make sure that the box that says image sequence is checked off. And once you hit open, Premiere Pro is going to do a little bit of magic and line up all those images to create its own image sequence. Now you can drag that onto your timeline, press play, and it's animating perfectly. And if you make a copy and line them up, you'll see that it loops seamlessly. And we can also put a video file underneath it, like the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer that I just had lying around. If you put it underneath the image sequence, you'll see that the ring is perfectly transparent and it looks beautiful. You can even right click and go to speed and duration and increase or decrease the speed of the ring's animation. And tweak it to whatever settings you want. And look at this, you can call me Mr. Graphic Designer cause that's a masterpiece. <laughs> and one little bonus tip, if you want to add a glow to the ring, go to effects, drop shadow, and drag the drop shadow onto the ring. Now in the effects control panel, select the color of gold you want, Lower the opacity to 25%, make sure the distance is zero, and then increase the softness until it has the kind of glow that you want. And bada bing bada boom, you got everything you need! I gotta say, every time that I use Blender, I feel like I learn something new, and there's a lot of possibilities. Like I said before, our entire intro was made in Blender, so hopefully this will inspire you to make your own 3D animations in Blender. There's a lot of really great tutorials out there from people like Ducky3D, CG Matter, Blender Guru, and a lot more. There's even a podcast about it called the Blender Nest Podcast. I really suggest you check it out. But that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope you learned something. In the comments below, let us know if you like this kind of video. We've been thinking about doing more tutorials, and if you like this kind of thing, we'll do it more often. 
And if you don't, please let us know so we don't waste our time. And on that note, please feel free to give this video a like or a dislike, depending on how you feel, and let us know your opinions in the comments. We're always reading them, and we appreciate all of your feedback, whether good or bad. And on that note, I'm going to curl up into a ball like Sonic and go fast. <laughs> See you guys later.